it's a galaxy for a change. There are a lot of things in the Messier catalogue which aren't galaxies. Although, to be fair, it's not the nicest galaxy. I did pick a fairly ordinary looking galaxy. Has it got a cool name like the Golden Banana or the Death Spiral or anything? No, nope. Messier 98 is all there is, I'm afraid. I don't think it's got any, I mean, it's got an NGC number and all sorts of other telephone numbers you could refer to it by, but Messier 98 is the shortest and sweetest. Oh, can we name, give us a look, let's name it. You want to look? There we go. Let's give it a name. Well, it's a bit of a story with it, so maybe if we do the story, there might be something at the end. So it probably is a very nice looking spiral galaxy, and you can kind of see that there are indeed the spiral arms there. The reason why it doesn't look anywhere near as spectacular as some of the other spiral galaxies like Messier 51 is because it's so close to edge on. And so you can't see much of the structure in the disk of this galaxy. So remember these galaxies have a, a flat disk-like bit and then this sort of round bulgy bit in the middle. And the bit that's always the pretty thing, the, the thing that, that, uh, that makes these galaxies beautiful, tends to be the spiral structure in the disk. And of course when the disk gets very close to edge on like this, you just can't see much of it because you you're, you're, don't have that much sort of perspective to be able to see it uh, the way you can when it's face on. Oh, I think that makes it prettier. I think it makes it look more three-dimensional. It certainly has that aspect, yeah, you do get that real sense and you can really sort of convince yourself that there really are two components. You know, when you see a galaxy that's face on, it just, you know, you just see, as you say, you see this sort of flat thing to it. But here, because it's closer to edge on, you really can convince yourself there are two structures here. There was this disc-like thing close to edge on and then there's this much rounder thing in the middle. But the story I wanted to talk about actually is the bit in the middle, the bulge in the middle. And I said it's round, but actually if you look at this thing more closely, you can sort of convince yourself that this really isn't terribly round what's going on in the middle. Part of the problem why it's hard to tell in this case is because there's all this dust. You can see this, this reddish streak across the middle here. That's dust absorption between us and the middle of the galaxy, probably associated with the disk of this system. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on, but if we switch to the infrared, then you can see through all that dust. And so what this galaxy looks like in the infrared is this. So at some level it's nowhere near as dramatic a picture because it's not as high quality in terms of the image. But the, it does really see that structure in the middle and if you look at it quite closely you can see there is this very sort of strong X-like structure in the middle there. And that's not an artifact, that's nothing to do with you know, diffraction spikes or any of those things to do with the telescope. It really is intrinsic to this galaxy that it has this very sort of strong X-like structure in the middle of it. Which is what I wanted to talk about. Well, I think we're getting our name as well. It's the, it's Galaxy X. Galaxy X would be a good one for it, yeah. yeah. All right, go on then. What's the X? There's a story associated with this, and actually this is some uh, connects back to my own research as well, which is uh, people have known about this for a long time, and in fact, so that's a very extreme example. More generally what you see is instead of seeing something round in the middle, you tend to see something which is boxy, or in slightly more extreme cases, it kind of has a two-lobe structure to it. Um, and it's usually, that's usually described as kind of a peanut-shaped bulge because it looks like a peanut still in its shell. And people have been interested in where these peanut-shaped structures came from for a very long time. There was a theory which said, we also know that quite a lot of galaxies have these rectangular bar structures in the middle of them when you see them face on. So when you see them edge on, you see these peanut structures. When you look at face on galaxies, you quite often see these bar-like structures. And they're just an instability that if you just have a disk of stars all orbiting around initially on circular orbits, they tend to rearrange themselves in this way to create these bars in the middle. But that's all kind of happening in the plane of the disk. But some, the, there's a further instability which kicks in once this bar is formed, which actually is it starts to flop backwards and forwards out of the plane of the galaxy. Um, so it's a kind of a buckling instability, the thing buckles backwards and forwards. And over time, it's sort of, it's a, if you took a snapshot early on in this process, you'd see it bent one way or the other. But over time, it kind of fills out that whole region and creates one of these peanut-shaped structures. So for quite a long time, there had been this theory that said that these peanut-shaped structures, or in these extreme cases, these X-like structures that you see in M98, are associated with a bar in this galaxy that if it were face on, you'd see a bar. But edge on, you see the, the kind of the end state of this bar where it's gone through this buckling process and formed this peanut shaped structure. So I got kind of interested in this with a colleague, a guy called Conrad Kaiken, a number of years ago, and we looked at, well, is there some way to tell? And it turns out that, of course, there is this problem that if a galaxy's face on, you see the bar. If it's edge on, you see the peanut structure. But you never get to see both at once because the galaxy is either one or the other. But we figured out that in an edge on galaxy where you can see these peanut structures, there's a very characteristic signature you can see in the orbits of material going around. Because the thing you can measure uh, by measuring Doppler shifts is the line of sight motions. And of course, if you've got an edge on galaxy, typically you just see one side going away from you, the other side coming towards you because the whole thing's rotating. But what we, what we showed is that there's a much subtler signature because the orbits aren't exactly circles anymore. You start seeing something very characteristic in the kinematics. And so we made this suggestion, this hypothesis, that actually these two things were connected 
and that we could test that hypothesis by looking at Semejon galaxies and those that had these peanut straight shaped structures in the middle, we should see these weird kinematics associated with a bar. Those that have round bulges, we shouldn't. So we did that uh, and it worked. It turns out that there really is this very clear connection that where you have a peanut shaped bulge, you see this clear kinematic signature of a bar and where you have a round bulge, you don't. Are those kinematics you're looking at of stars that are in the structure itself or stars that are outside the structure interacting with it? It's mostly stars, it's a bit of both, because you, you can see the stars in the structure itself, but actually, even if you just look at gas, for example, so typically the gas is just orbiting in the disk of the galaxy, because it feels the gravitational pull of this bar in the middle, its orbits get distorted as well. So even just in gas, which is probably not directly associated with this peanut-shaped structure, you can still see this very clear characteristic signature of a bar. We got excited about this, and it turns out the key to success in astronomy is coming up with a good tag for it, a good angle for it. Right? And so the, the angle we came up with this is we called it the Snickers hypothesis, which is, is there a peanut in every bar, basically? So we were able to show, indeed, confirm this Snickers hypothesis that there is indeed a peanut in every bar. And it turns out when you come up with a nice angle like that, the press gets quite interested in the work that you're doing. So we ended up appearing in various newspapers. You can tell quite how long ago this is by the yellowed state of this newspaper cutting that I kept. You realise you are a media tart. <laughs> I, I, well, <laughs> demonstrably so, yes. Uh, so this was actually April 1996 we did this, or when the, at least when this article came out, so yes. Peanut bar inspires galaxy theory. And the first paragraph is, art may imitate life, but now cosmology is imitating confectionery. Inspired by Galaxy and Mars bars and Milky Ways, Dr. Michael Merrifield of Southampton University, where I was at the time, has come up with the Snickers peanut bar hypothesis, giving for the first time a three-dimensional picture of the central parts of spiral galaxies. This is a really extreme version of the peanut, because remember, so remember what happens is the thing kind of flexes backwards and forwards, and you tend to end up with sort of a build-up at the edges. And if it's not really a really extreme case, when you take a picture of it, all you just see is this overall kind of envelope for the thing. But this is a really extreme case where you can see those two ends of the, of the kind of flopping backwards and forwards that it's left some stars up there and some stars down there, which creates this beautiful X-shaped X structure in the middle. Professor, it's the extreme peanut galaxy. There you go. <laughs> M58, instead of the unknown galaxy, <laughs> we could call it the ring bearer. You, like, that's the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> Literally, you could not have said anything that made me happier than the Ring Bearer Galaxy. <laughs>